Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Well, today we're going to talk about Henry's, and I'm not talking about your Uncle Henry, or in my case, my nephew Henry. We are talking about an acronym that people use to describe young people who are making high income. Henry stands for high earner, not rich yet. And the idea of a Henry is that we see these individuals who are making incomes in excess of six figures, and they tend to be in high level professional fields, maybe they're doctors or they're lawyers, and they are seeing very large income streams. Their cash flow is really strong, but they are not actually accumulating or haven't yet accumulated very many resources in terms of their net worth. And one of the things that's really interesting about those individuals is they can fall into a trap in believing that they are rich, believing that because their income is high, they are doing really well. And the truth is, yes, they are doing well if their income is at that high level, but if they're not careful, they can become uh, reckless spenders because they believe they are in a good position financially. I've had a lot of conversations with doctors who have come out of medical school as a great example of of a Henry. They are uh, making very large incomes, uh, and they should. They've spent a lot of time in medical school. They have put in a lot of work to get to where they are. But I tell them as they come out of that residency and they're starting into their career to act as if They are really, really poor because in truth, they are. I tell them, even though you are making really high income, when you walk into a room of your peers, of your friends who are not carrying around two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of medical school debt, they are wealthier than you. Recognize that this is different that you are not just measuring your success by your income. And so I find Henry's are dangerous in a lot of ways to themselves if they don't recognize that not rich yet part of the acronym. They see the high earning and they spend it because they have the confidence that it will continue and they are missing opportunities to get started on becoming wealthy because they think they already are. And this is a really interesting conversation. If you are a Henry, uh, this is your podcast to listen to, to recognize how to change your mindset. If you're leading a church community that has a lot of Henry's in it, uh, this may be a conversation that you want to be having, even maybe from the stage. You want to start this conversation of helping people recognize how this works, what stewardship looks like if you are Henry. And so let's just uh, level set how we think about this. Uh, We are in a society where a lot of times income is what people look at to determine success. We will categorize people as rich based on their cash flow. And so if you are making a six-figure income, depending on the city that you live in, uh, you may already be categorized as rich even if on paper you don't actually own anything. Many of these young high earners are coming into those careers carrying a lot of debt. If they were uh, in medical school or they went to law school, they are stepping into this higher income, but they've got a runway to just get back to zero on their net worth. Their net worth many times is strongly negative. 
And so when they step into that income, the thing that we can help them with the most is seeing their measuring stick of wealth as their net worth, seeing it rightly. Our litmus test for where we are financially, how healthy we are financially, should always be our net worth. And again, net worth is not your human worth. You are of infinite value as an individual. God's value for you is immeasurable. Your financial value, though, is measured by taking what you own minus what you owe. And so for a lot of these individuals who come into these high incomes, they start buying with those incomes. They buy the nice car. They get the nice apartment. They're spending very rapidly. And they are stepping into that income carrying a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of student loans in many cases. And so they have a deeply negative net worth and they are not fixing that problem. And so if we don't call their attention to how to measure that wealth using the net worth test, they will continue to believe because they're being told by the society that they live in that wealth is really measured in cash flow, in income. And so they're wealthy. They're not. That not yet part of the Henry is really important. It is very possible that a high income earner could become perpetually not wealthy. I have worked with families over the years that make $350,000 a year, which in my context is a very high income in Cincinnati, Ohio. And they are still not wealthy. They have spent on all the cars and the toys and the biggest house, and they are mortgaged to the eyeballs, and they have student loans that they're carrying. And so they are looking wealthy on the outside because they're buying all the things with their cash flow. But on paper, they're actually not worth anything because they've spent everything that came in. And so a Henry is really at risk of falling prey to chasing that lifestyle, to continually pressing more and more spending because they can afford it. And they think if their bills are paid, they're doing well financially. Paying your bills and being able to cover your costs of your lifestyle is just the beginning of basic financial stewardship. It is not the end goal. It is just the starting line. The more important thing for a Henry, more than anything else, is to establish very quickly where their lifestyle cap will fall. Where do you draw the line to say, this is contentment, this is satisfaction, this far, no further? And how soon can you start to fix the problem of not being rich yet? How soon can you start to close that gap? Because if we don't draw those lines early, we will miss the opportunity of using that abundance that you've been blessed with to start to accumulate for future obedience. Henry's are in an incredible position to be able to get ahead quickly if they recognize where they actually are early. If they see themselves walking into these high incomes as being poor, if they measure their net worth and recognize I don't own anything yet and I owe a lot, I need to close that gap. If we can help them see the truth of their real financial position, then they have the resources to fix that problem. But if they continually measure their success by income, They'll continue to give their brain evidence that they can spend, that they have permission to continually spend because they're rich. They're not. And if you are in a leadership position, if you are helping uh, teach financial stewardship classes, if you are pastoring young families that are experiencing these high earning years at an early age, I believe it is a responsibility of ours as a church to help them see those realities so that they can make wiser decisions, so that they can start sooner to honor God with this abundance that they have been given to manage. It is really easy for them to believe 
that that abundance is there for their own self-indulgence and for their own enjoyment. It's not. That is not why God blesses. He does not bless us for our own delight and enjoyment alone. He blesses us to be a blessing. And we will not be in a position as Henry's to be a blessing to others unless we intentionally draw those lines early and often and we start to close that gap and become wealthy in real measurable terms, in net worth terms, so that we can have the confidence to step into generosity, to step into future obedience, so that we can be steadied and ready to share these resources with those who are not in a similar position. One of the things I see that feeds a lot of these decisions for Henry's is if they grew up in a family where there was affluence, the assumption based on the income that they're bringing in is that they get to live the same lifestyle that their parents have always lived. As far as they know, this is just how this works. But if their family has been accumulating wealth for a long period of time and their experience is that they got to go on vacations and do all the things and enjoy this abundance, that abundance came over time. There is a responsibility as a faithful steward to accumulate those resources, be prepared for future obedience, to put yourself on a path that is sustainable. And that takes time. Wealth takes time and time takes time. And if we are thinking of wealth only in terms of income, we will spend at the level that we're used to experiencing when we grew up in an affluent house, even though we individually, as we're starting our own path, are not affluent yet. We do not have wealth. We just have cash flow. Act like it. Make your decisions based on your actual financial reality, not just on your income. And that may mean that you don't get to live the lifestyle that your family was used to for a season. Get to a place where you have recovered some of that negative net worth because you've paid off those student loans. Get to a place where you have put yourself on a sustainable path because you're maxing out your 401k, you're hitting these Roth IRA maxes, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where those saving dollars are growing your net worth at a pace that allows you in the future to live the life that you're used to with your family. But don't start there. Another thing that I see often is because we are surrounded by social media, particularly these Henry families, they are surrounded by social media that's telling them that this is a lifestyle you should shoot to attain. That if you are achieving these high levels of income, you should live this way. You deserve it. You've earned it. And that is a very toxic thought that can justify self-indulgence, that can justify overspending, that can justify poor stewardship, simply because we're watching other people who are being poor stewards, modeling for us, spending at high levels. And so the lifestyle cap is such a key ingredient to these families, to these individuals, to draw those lines and establish contentment and satisfaction well below your income level so that generosity becomes a very high priority early in your experience with money. As you're making these decisions, if you've drawn these lines and you've put in place some boundaries for yourself that prohibit that thought of, I deserve, I earned it, I want to chase this never-ending expansion of lifestyle creep, if we draw those lines early, then what we get to experience is the fullness and the fulfillment of generosity of stepping in to obedience to what God would have us do with his resources. And the earlier we experience that, the more we fall in love with it. We may spend many years chasing this lifestyle creep and continually expanding our spending only to find that there is emptiness and disappointment and dissatisfaction on the other side of that expansion. It's not fulfilling. So the sooner that we step into generosity and do what God is calling us to and experience the beauty 
of helping to lift burdens of other people who are in need, the sooner we start to realize that that actually is what brings us contentment and fulfillment and satisfaction. One of the other solutions to the dangers of Henry's kind of falling into that path of lifestyle expansion is mapping out your non-negotiables really intentionally. For a, a high earner, there is the potential to say yes to a lot of things. But that doesn't mean that all of those things actually matter to you or that all of those things are actually going to bring meaning and purpose and delight into your life. So we can get really overcommitted really quickly. We can stack a lot of payments on top of each other. We can get stuck in a lot of cash flow commitments because we can afford them, because they don't hurt us necessarily. They feel sustainable and, and we can do it. So we say yes. It is really important to map out the things that we really do want to say yes to specifically and understand the consequences of this yes means I have to say no to these other things. Choosing that early, being intentional about what our priorities are as an individual or as a family, if you're getting started as a family, is more important for a Henry than maybe anybody else because their ability to say yes allows them to get way more overcommitted. In some ways, people who are not as high earners have automatic boundaries put in place. There are just natural limitations to what they can say yes to. For a Henry, those limitations are way further out. They can say yes to a whole lot more before they've filled up their cash flow. And that actually becomes problematic. So setting those priorities, what we call your non-negotiables, where you decide what you're picking up, and as a result, you decide what you're putting down, that is so critical and so counterintuitive for a Henry. Most of those high earners are going to just continually press further into lifestyle expansion because there's not much of a hindrance to doing that. And so putting those boundaries on yourself early on is incredibly helpful to getting to a place where you're starting down these paths of faithful stewardship, you're being wise savers, you're being generous givers, you're doing the things that matter, and you prioritize those things that matter above other things that are really just about chasing, keeping up with the Joneses, or living a lifestyle that is extravagant. Those things will not fulfill you and will lead to habits that start to create mindsets of ownership that start to tell you that you deserve it, that you did it, that you own it. You get to pick how you use these resources because they're yours. The sooner we put some of these structures and frameworks in place, the less likely it is that we have to undo and, and kind of rework our mindset later in life. This is the beauty of faithful stewardship early with high earners is they get to experience the joy of faithful stewardship and the freedom that it brings earlier rather than having to peel away bad habits and ownership mindsets and decisions that become habitual that lead them further away from God's design and God's desire for his resources. And so if you are a Henry, Put some of these things in place now. Be intentional. Sit down and ask God, what would you have me do with this abundance that is coming in? How do I honor you with your resources? And if you are leading Henry's, challenge them to recognize where they really are financially. They are not rich yet. Their wealth is not determined by their cash flow. And Call them to a higher level of faithful stewardship and honoring God with his resources so that those habits get put in place early and they actually start down a path that unlocks so much freedom and so much beauty rather than getting trapped in the habits of overindulgence and lavish lifestyles. Mm -hmm. 
thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.